Ooh, uh, my name is Gareth and welcome to Fat Pigeon Audio Reviews, where today we're in Audio Lounge Leicester's new demo room. Uh, with the shinies and the deflectors, yeah. But today we are here to review, have a quick look at the R3 Meta. Now, as we all know, hi-fi enthusiasts and audio files out there, everybody knows that a speaker in blue sounds better. <laughs> well. R3 Meta from Kef. Five inch mid range driver with the tweeter in the center, the UniQ driver, as it were, with that metal dome tweeter in the center. It's actually classed as a three way speaker. Tweeter, mid range, bass driver. Now, this is a dedicated bass driver. This is a six and a half inch bass driver, aluminium. Same as the top here, five inch aluminium with again that metal dome tweeter. Now on the actual, this new series, on the Meta series, they've got the Meta technology inside, that Meta material um, that actually covers the bracing and things like that are all around with inside the speaker itself. It also has these, these waveguides here that refract that sort of sound, how the sounds disperse. Is it different angles and things? They've done a lot of research on these to get a better angle for a sound, a bigger sound state. Now, when it's firing backwards, it's like I say, it's got this disc. And the, only, the best way I can describe this disc, I'll try and put a picture of it up. Uh, this meta material, this sort of newfangled way of getting rid of it. I mean, on the BMWs, they have the big long cones at the back of the tweet and things so it just bounces around into nothing and this is their sort of iteration of that uh, without having to have a big deep speaker i'm not sure how old everybody is or my audience is out there <coughs> but back in the 90s maybe the 80s they had a simple little game which was a circle and it had a maze in it and it had a little little pinball bearing in there a little bearing in there and you used to have to go around the little little disc thing round all these little obstacles like a maze and get that little ball bearing into the center now that's exactly it looks just like one of those that they've bolted to the back of the driver inside to disperse all that frequency that's coming out of the back of the actual driver itself the frequency response is 38 hertz to 50,000 hertz now don't get me wrong the 50,000 hertz we can't hear that but the fact that it's got 50,000 hertz says to me that it can get to that 20,000 to 15,000 hertz range that we can hear with ease. It does it easily because it can potentially get to 50,000 hertz. They have bi-wireable binding posts on the back where speakers can be plugged in to amplifiers with a wire. And that's bi-ampable and actually bi-wireable. And in that sort of, within that little panel itself, it has these two little knobs that you screw um, left and right. So you tighten them and you loosen them, funnily enough. Lefty loosey, yeah, okay. Anyway, so they have on that panel, they have this little adjuster on there, which brings that little bridge, that link, away from the high frequency, low frequency, so it's internally built. So in theory, you could sort of unscrew it and let that sort of connection be disconnected, as it were, from the little panel, the binding posts, and put your own links in or your own bridges in, entirely up to you. Or when it comes to you by wiring or by amping, you just screw it, it takes that connection off, away you go, you can buy amp by wire. But if you don't want to use that, you've just got a singular cable like I personally have, then just keep that, that tight, keep that screw tight, and that connection is made all the time. Again, I had I did a review on some kefs, some old vintage kefs that from my dad's, uh, from my dad's house that I borrowed, and he lost those bridges. So thankfully with these you can't you can't lose them because they're built in. This price point of the Kef R3 Meta is 18.95, so 1,900 pounds in the UK. Now you can also get the, the matching stands with them, which is 600 pounds. So it puts it up to about 2,500 pounds for the stands as well. But with the stands, they've got, uh, like a normal Kef sort of system, they've got four screws, four big bolts that go through the bottom of the stand into the speaker. So if in case that you have grandchildren, children around the house, and they just give them a knock, they're not gonna fall off, they're not gonna fall over. If you buy the stands and they're bolted on. Nice addition. That's just what Kef do, they're bolt stuck together. For rigidity. And it obviously alters, oh, and it obviously alters sound quality, tightens things up, controls things a bit more on those stands. They're actually fillable stands and they do have um, the cable management in there as well. 
So they weigh 12 kilos. It's about 12 or 12 or 13 kilos, I think. I can't remember the quite uh, the exact specification. Uh, but yeah, about 12 kilos. So they're weighty and they're, they're, they're quite a nice cabinet. They're quite a big size cabinet for a bookshelf speaker. It's about, it's about the sort of size that I'd have. I would definitely have a size. I, I, don't get me wrong, with smaller speakers, they can sound fantastic and they can be big sound and all that sort of stuff. But for presents, when you're actually here with them, I do like them, and I do like this colour scheme. I know I keep going on about the blue, but I really do like the blue. I mean, if someone said to you, do you want to buy a blue speaker, mate? No. No, I don't want to buy a blue speaker. But then when you see a blue speaker with this array of drivers and the colour combinations, you think, actually, no, I will buy a blue speaker, yeah. Yeah, but again, it's not for everybody. <laughs> So I tried these speakers with lots of different amplifiers. Now I put them first on with the 6000A from Audio Lab, uh, about 650 pounds that is, and they sort of, they sounded awful. I'll be honest with you. It turns out these need some running time. Out of the box, they are flat, they are thin, they are hollow, they have no body to them whatsoever, and you think, oh my god, what have I wasted my money on? But give them five to ten hours and they will start to get loose and they will start to come alive and actually do what they're supposed to do. 50 hours in, these are at their optimal and they are not going to change and that's the exact sound you're going to get. Again, from the 10 hours to the 50 hours, there's not much in it, but that first five to ten hours, the change is night and day. I know night and day, but the change is night and day difference between when you first get out of the box. So I thought I thought to myself, actually, this 6000 amp from Audio Lab and this, <laughs> don't care well at all, but I was wrong. I was wrong. They had their hours put through it. We left them on for a few days overnight for about 48 hours. And now they just sing with funniest thing is any amplifier we put on them. They sort of, don't get me wrong, they, of course they step up with each amp you get. But with the 6000A, again, it's our budget one at Audio Lounge Lester, so that's why I keep referring to the 6000A. It just drove them beautifully. Now, these are a 4 ohm speaker, 87 decibels. So they're not the easiest speaker to drive. And I thought that the 6000A would sort of struggle with it, but it didn't. They just, they just sort of, it was my first experience with the R3s, and I didn't expect them to sort of do what they did with that budget amplifier. So if you do have an amplifier out there that's like four or five hundred pounds, 50, 60 watts, it will drive them beautifully. And I sort of didn't expect that. And it was, I love these pleasant surprises. This is why these are on the channel, because they sort of do everything very well. Now, speaking of that, like I said, we went from the 6000A all the way through. We tried the Leak afterwards, the Leak 230. And that had warmth to it and a little bit more power than the 6000 amp. But, and you think, oh my God, what, what amp's going to run? It's not going to sound very good. And we went through all these different amplifiers. We ended up with the Hegel 190. Now, don't get me wrong, the Hegel 190 is a three and a half thousand pound uh, amplifier. But, oh my God, the detail. With, the de with these, with these being rear ported, um, they're not difficult to position. They're not difficult to position, but you need them away from the wall a bit because it, does, it does have a big large port on the back. And it does make a big difference. I mean, they've got all that metal material inside to stop the internal stuff. But when the external stuff's blowing, you need to give them about a couple of feet from the wall, maybe. Maybe you get away with it 18 inches. <laughs> The 190, we I found, just setting up in the different rooms that we have here, um, is it throws out so much detail, that 190 amplifier, that I had to basically have them ba more or less flat, no towing at all. Maybe a slight, slight increment of towing. But when you get these positioned, oh my God, the airiness. Again, we sort of, when, it, when they stepped up from all the different amps, like I say, they work well with every amplifier, but then it also sort of surprised me again where 
It worked with any genre of music. There's certain speakers that we have in the shop and I have at home and you've, you've all heard yourselves that don't cope very well with rock music or they don't get the highs for orchestras or they don't have the bass or the bass is too much for dance music, things like that. There's always something that you're trying to, you're trying to pick out this all round speaker and this is an all round speaker. The way that this deals with all different amplifiers and gives you a fantastic sound, the way that any genre of music you throw at it, albeit a violin or a kick drum or whatever else, rock music ah, rock music it just deals with it and again it's that's why it's on the channel I, I'm, and that's why my heart's are waving around everywhere and i'm basically standing up is because they're that gem they're that whoa that shock and awe speaker that i didn't expect at this price point now without the stands like i said they're 1900 pounds and they're sort of they're sort of punching a little bit above their weight in my opinion i can't i we've thrown everything at it and we, I always do this in every video that I make and every test that I do. I try and trip it up with something. I try and throw something at it and see if it copes with this, see if it copes with that. There's a bit on, I know, I know people out there are going to hate me, but um, Niall, Nils Lofgren, I think it is, uh, does um, Keith Don't Go. I know it's a horror. Everyone out there says, oh, yeah, everyone uses that as a test track. And everyone's sick of it. And I get that because I'm a little bit sick of it myself. But I put that on and in about two and a half minutes in, maybe three minutes into that track, it was just pinpoint. You could see, you could sort of hear the guitar moving. These ding 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 ding, and you could sort of like visualise this guitar in the air. It seemed, and all these notes were flying out everywhere. Um, and it was it was quite authoritative as well. It's punchy. Now the bass driver, the single bass driver. Again, if you get it too far into a corner, you can get a little bit of bloat from them. But if you get them at the correct position, they do exactly what they're designed to do, and they give you that kick. They give you that punch. They're super responsive and so fast, and they keep up with everything. Again, that we threw at it here. These image beautifully in the centre and the airiness and the spatial awareness and how much these can fill a room. Again, they're not a small bookshelf, but they're not a big floor stander either. But they're filling that space that we have here. And even at my own home, they just completely filled that wall with music and awe. It was amazing. Mid-range vocals. It has that beautiful soft airiness to a vocal. And with that driver there, adding that little bit more to vocals, a deep voice, a, a, you know, a, a acapella to that, again, that Knowles Lifgren, the Keith Don't Go, that lower end, that bass guitar he's got, goes down to about 40 hertz, which is about where these sit at 38. It just comes alive and you can feel it and it feels like he's in the room with you. And on that track, I know people don't like it, but on that track, you can sometimes hear the detail of them strings hitting together and everything comes from that higher end frequency, comes from this Uniq driver in blue with the gold champagne. Again, oh no, yeah. they come in the walnut as well, that wooden finish. Now, what I learned, the, the Kef man came around here uh, not long ago um, when these first came in and the wooden ones, the veneer ones, the walnut ones are actually taken from the same panel, from the same tree. So it's not a case of they just box up a speaker, put them as a pair and that's it, away they go. They actually use that same panel for the veneer on the walnut ones, so the grain's the same on your pair of speakers. So that's those two speakers from that one panel have to become a pair. They're not just boxed individually and just all chucked in. They're actually matching pairs for that panel, which I thought was quite a nice touch with the grain and things like that. And you saw on, on them, you can actually see that the grain is very similar, all the same. We've also got the R5s in. The floor standard variant of the of the meta the sort of bigger brother of these but they've got five and a quarter inch drivers as their base drivers two of them and then this uniq array in the center again but i went because we got them both in here at the same time i went between the two and i still i sort of lent towards these all bit they're, th they're three thousand pounds the kept that the r5s are but I still kept coming back to these. I don't know if the back of my mind is thinking price to performance. I sort of leaned towards these. These were slightly better for me at the £1,900. You're paying £3,000. I expected them to be better. But these, I just kept coming back to these a little bit more. The mids and the detail was a little bit more precise for me on these. With the R5 Meta, the floor stander, it wasn't, I mean, maybe they needed a lot more room. Maybe it was me and my positioning, but it was a little bit bloated, a little bit more bassy, and it sort of overtook that mid-range detail and that higher end frequency. The, the, the bass just sort of crept into its sort of territory, which it shouldn't have been. Again, it could have been my positioning of the speakers. It was just a quick test with those as well against these. Um, and then they need to run in. 
This is just a quick look video. I just wanted to get a video out there. It's actually been quite a long time since I've been, uh, I've put a video out and I do apologize for that. But unfortunately life happens, things like that. My wife's been in surgery a few times and I've had to sort of do everything around the house. I'm not complaining. I sort of have this understanding now of how much my wife actually does at home uh, because I've actually taken on board everything uh, because she's not been well again, uh, recovering from surgeries and things like that. And that, I just wanted to put that in the end of the video, uh, just to let you know that I've not forgotten about YouTube, I've not forgotten about my subscribers, I do appreciate all you guys out there and everybody that watches these videos. I know I can come across as sort of uh, over the top maybe sometimes, but I can look at, I mean they're just, oh, have a listen to a pair, you'll, sort, you'll get excited as well when you put all these different genres through it. I mean vinyl through these, I love the vinyl through these as well, I really did. That warmth from that vinyl, this pursues that sort of really very well and gets that detail across. So things to note, out of the box they sound god awful. Thin, flat, bleh, not good at all. But do not be put off by that. Obviously if you go to a shop like this or a shop nearby you, they'll already be running and you can actually hear what they're gonna sound like when you've ran your own pair in. Again, the range of colours, you can sort of get that sort of colour that you want in these. But go and have a listen to them. Try them with all different sorts of amplifiers. Because I wanted to sort of know where it got rubbish. What, what wouldn't power it. And I couldn't find anything. It doesn't make sense. Lots of different speakers that I've tried in the past. I mean, absolutely with Dictiques and absolutely with Magnapa. You can't power those with every amplifier because they just take too much. They're a 4 ohm. They dip to like 2 ohms sometimes. And they take a lot of power, a lot of grunt. But I sort of thought something would be a little bit flatter or something wouldn't produce a good enough bass for it or something wouldn't quite power it. But it didn't, and every, every, again, every genre, every amplifier we put at this, again, of course it stepped up in quality with the amplifiers, but there was no amplifier there that didn't drive them properly. There was no amplifier there that thought, oh, actually, that's not very good. Don't pair that with these ones. Now, some people have said that with the right equipment, they sound good. <laughs> no. No. I mean, that's, I suppose that's true with anything, but if you're not, you're not going to put it on a little Bluetooth amplifier that costs £39 from China and expect them to sound good. In fact, I'd like to try that because so far everything we've thrown at this, it's sounding good. Maybe I get a little Bluetooth amplifier and see how they, how they cope with that one. But again, ha yes, these speakers get the, yeah, hats off to Kef for this meta material and hats off for designing this speaker. This just, well, everybody that's sort of been into the shop, because I do work here part-time, uh, Audio Lounge, everyone that's been into the shop and heard these have pretty much bought them or are coming back to buy a pair. And uh, they've not been out too long. Again, I wanted to get them out sooner, uh, but you know, life happens, unfortunately. But I just wanted to say that I am back now. I'm gonna be trying to put a video or two on each week. With like I say, next week, I need to do the Hegel amplifiers. I need to do the Martin Logan range. The Martin Logan F20 floor standards. <laughs> That's gonna be a good video. Again, this was just a quick first look video at the Kef R3 Meta. In blue. Thank you so much for watching. If you've made it to the end of the video, good on you as it were. A lot of people don't. Um, so thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to go. Like I said, it was just a quick look video. I've got a few minutes here before the shop opens up. Wanted to get a video out there. Again, it's been a long time. So thank you so much for watching. Again, until the end, I wanted to sort of put the information on at the end of the video because uh, normally my subscribers do sort of make it to the end. Well, hopefully. Um, hopefully my subscribers or, you know, whoever you are, if you're not a subscribe, why aren't you subscribed? Why aren't you subscribed? I mean, we've got this stuff here and it's shiny. And we've got black bits at the back with it shiny and stuff. Why wouldn't you subscribe to this? And this. Oh, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Thank you so much for watching. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I see you in the next video.